Hey there, it's Kate Swoboda, also known as Kate Courageous. I'm the creator of YourCourageousLife.com, the director of the Courageous Living Coach Certification at TeamCLCC.com, and I'm the author of the book, The Courage Habit, which is available at booksellers everywhere and of course at Amazon. I coach some pretty incredible women via the Sovereign Experience, which you can learn more about at YourCourageousLife.com. I do a little group coaching help over at facilitatewithimpact.com. And now I'm the host of a new podcast, the Your Courageous Life podcast. We're going to talk about going after what you want and living a more courageous, emotionally resilient life. I might drop a couple of F-bombs, so don't listen with your kids in the backseat. And here we go. All righty. If you've checked out the title for this episode, you already know some good stuff is coming. How to practice courage when you hate your job. I thought that this would be a helpful episode to tease out because I know that there are so many people who feel like, I wish that I could live a courageous life, but it's pretty damn hard to do when I'm waking up every day and I am commuting to, going to this soul-sucking job with these I don't know, you know, I hear all kinds of things, coworkers that I hate, a commute that I hate, <laughs> um, sounding familiar already, work that doesn't light me up or that feels really pointless. And one of the things that I have been doing more of in recent years is connecting with different companies. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, so um, there are a lot of companies that are nearby, and talking to companies about the very real issue of having employees who are disengaged. And when I talk with companies who go, I got, we got a lot of employees who really just are disengaged. It feels like morale is down, etc. One of the hard truths that I tried to deliver to them is let's go ahead and go with radical self-responsibility here. You guys need to accept that if everybody in the company, or if there's a general trend towards malaise, it's, it's the company. So it's not, we can't find good employees because they don't exist. It's that the company culture needs to change. And that's going to require some courage. And in the meantime, on the flip side of that, there are a lot of people, a lot of you who are listeners who have work or passion projects that you really, really wish that you could dive into with your entire heart. And eight hours a day plus commute, you are going to jobs that you don't really like that take you away from those passion projects. And that's a very real fact of life for, I would say, probably the majority of the workforce. So I wanted to talk about how you can practice courage even when you hate your job. That's what we're getting into today. So get ready. Hoping this helps. And here's the first bit of help that I'm going to offer to you. I'm going to offer you some help that was offered to me. But disclaimer, warning, watch out. It's probably not going to feel like help from the get-go. Because in the same way that it is very uncomfortable for any of these companies that I've worked with to really go it's us. It's the company culture. This is the radical self-responsibility that it's time to take. Then what I am going to offer to you is that if you are really, really unhappy in your job day after day after day, there are circumstances that could change. And if we're just going to go with radical responsibility, since you may or may not have a lot of choice around the circumstances or control over the circumstances, and most people don't, it's you. And I don't mean that as an unkindness. And I don't mean that if you are the only woman at a a company full of men and sexism is happening every day. I do not mean that you are just too sensitive and you need to get over it. I don't mean that. What I mean when I say it's you is that it starts with you and it ends with you to be the one who takes the reins and goes every single iota 
of control that I could possibly have in this soul-sucking, demoralizing, awful situation, if there's a molecule of that, I grab onto the molecule. And I get that that's really hard. And I get that that's really confronting. But I also say it with a ton of love because I don't think it does you any good to be stuck in the ruminating. And I'm going based off of research here. That There's ample research that comes from a number of therapeutic modalities, acceptance and commitment therapy and dialectical behavior therapy and narrative therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy. And a lot of it looks at how do we interrupt the thoughts that just are not very helpful. And interrupt is a good word because, by the way, having written a book called The Courage Habit and having gone around on my platforms over the years saying there is no fearless and getting rid of fear is not what we should be doing and it doesn't actually work. It was very gratifying to me to write the courage habit and see like like trying to get rid of fear, trying to like ignore it or white knuckle your way through it or pretend it doesn't exist. That that doesn't work. But interrupting it is a healthy thing to do. You might liken it to, you know, <laughs> if a small child is hitting you in the midst of a tantrum, you want to interrupt the fact that that child is hitting you, okay? You actually need to stop the kid from hitting you. Not so helpful, though, to go hitting the kid back because, in fact, you are bigger. And, in fact, it just teaches the kid that hitting is okay and on and on and on. That's, that's just a helpful metaphor you might lean on during trying times. So, okay, it's you you are at the center of this problem called, I don't like my job. And that could be the worst news of your life, or you could decide to reframe that limiting story and go, this is the best news of my life. Because if I'm at the center of it, then I am the one who gets to change every single molecule of what's possible to change that I can grasp onto. And there are a lot of different interventions that you can have. One intervention could be you confront the myth that you can't live a courageous and fulfilled life until you completely and totally love your career. You could rewrite the story that your career is so awful and you could rearrange your life in such a way that every single second that you are not at that job, you are doing only the things that light you up and fill your cup, and then you could completely and totally rewrite that job as being like the fund that makes it possible for every single spare second of your your time that you're not at your job to be devoted to the things that give you something that fills your cup. This is something that I talk about a lot with the trainees in the Courageous Living Coach Certification, which is the program, the coach training program that I'm the director of, because it's very common for them to come into our program and to feel so lit up by coaching, to, to go, I found it. I found the career that is the honor and privilege and joy and connection. It is everything I've been looking for. But here I am, and I'm in the early years of building my business. I don't have a ton of money, and what am I going to do? I still have to go to this job that's a soul-sucking job. My invitation is always to look at that job as being like the venture capital investment fund that you don't have to pay back. I, too, I'm speaking for myself here, started my coaching practice with nothing, with no clients. And I, too, needed to work my salary job while I built my business on the side. And I, too, know what it is like to have those days where you're just like, I like I, going into work feels like, yeah, I can't. And so... What do I want to do? Do I want to stay in the, I hate this job, I hate this job, I hate this job, I hate this job, here are all the problems with the job, here are the coworkers I don't like, here's the work I don't like, I hate this job, I hate this job, I hate this job. Like, what do you want to do? You want to stay in that or you want to do what you can. Put yourself at the center of it. It's you. You've got the problem. How am I going to positively change it? 
Another thing you might want to notice, that there are four predominant fear patterns that I identified when I was writing The Courage Habit. And if you know what your fear pattern is, then you can know how fear habitually operates in your life. And the big premise of The Courage Habit is that we often think of habits as being like remembering to brush your teeth or exercising every morning. And those are, of course, habits, but they're also emotional and behavioral habits. They're habitual ways of being that we go into. And they're habitual ways of being stuck in fear that we go into. And once those habitual ways of being or fear become habitual, <laughs> we don't even question it anymore. And in fact, we start labeling ourselves. We start going, oh, you know, I'm a classic perfectionist or, oh, you know, I'm such a people pleaser. And we don't stop to think like, wait a second, that's not who you are. That's a habitual way of responding to fear. It's not who you are. It is a habitual behavioral response. And a habitual behavioral response can be changed. So there are four predominant fear patterns that I talk about in The Courage Habit. You can read about in detail which of those, uh, what all the details are on those and figure out which one is your predominant one. We all get hooked by them at least a little bit. There's always one that we get hooked by the most. And the four predominant fear patterns are perfectionism, people-pleasing, also called martyrdom, pessimism, and self-sabotage. Perfectionism, people-pleasing, pessimism, self-sabotage. So one of the things that you can do to start practicing courage when you hate your job is to get really, really clear on where perfectionism, people-pleasing, pessimism, or self-sabotage are fear patterns that you have gone into so many times that they are habits, they're habitual, you're not thinking about them, and every single day, it's cue routine reward. Your alarm clock goes off. That is a cue for the routine of, uh, this job sucks, which is pessimism, clear and simple. And as soon as that routine starts to play out, you don't even think about it. Suddenly breakfast sucks and the commute sucks and the music sucks and everything sucks. And then you go soul sucking job. Or maybe your routine is a little bit different. That alarm clock goes off and that's your cue and you wake up, you sit up in bed and you start thinking to yourself, oh God, I probably already have 10 emails that I've got to respond to. Okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do it. And I'm really going to tell boss lady that I'm not going to be doing anything related to that meeting later today. But oh, every time she starts to really pile on the guilt, I feel like I have to. Maybe it's just easier to tell her that I'll do it. And then she won't bug me about it. That would be like a people-pleasing martyrdom pattern. And if it's what you go into, as soon as you get whatever your cue is, I'm just using the alarm clock as an example, but there could be another cue that would be present for you. If that is the cue that prompts your routine, isn't it helpful to be aware of that so that you can actually take a little bit of control over it and go, wait a second, this doesn't have to run on autopilot. And then we get to this other kind of interesting idea. If you want to practice courage when you hate your job, you could look at what your fear patterns are. So learn what all four of them really entail and how they show up so that you can recognize them when they show up. Know which one is your most predominant one. And see your job as your warrior training ground to become a more courageous person. Why do you think that the only place that you can become a more courageous person is if you follow the dreams that you have for your creative expression? I mean, think about that for a minute. We get caught in that in our society. We go, well, yeah, I, you know, I really want to follow my dream. I want to write that book or travel the world or found that startup. And it's like this goal-based thing that's like way over there. And then we get completely stuck in this story that we don't even question, that we can't practice courage in our lives until we can get rid of this stinking job so that we can go over there and have life be different. I don't think life really works that way. 
This is some basic Buddhist psychology. And Buddhist psychology is kind of like an offshoot of Buddhism as a religion, which is you work with what's here right now. You trust that what's here right now is the perfect training ground for what is to come next. So how can all the things that you don't like about your job be an opportunity for you to work on your fear pattern? How buffed, how strong, how bold, how much more evolved will you be if you spend even 30 days or try a week, but a week, 30 days, a year, how much more of life will you be able to hold if you go, you know what? It's not actually when I can start my coaching practice that I get to fully be my most courageous self. It's right here, right now. This is my warrior training ground. This is it right here. This is where I flex the muscle. So you flex the muscle by knowing what it looks like when fear is showing up. So you got to know what your fear patterns are. You can't skip that part. I mean, you can for a little bit, but you get ensnared pretty quickly. That's why I'm saying really study up on the four different fear patterns that I talk about in the courage habit. And then take that on as this is an opportunity for me to work on that fear pattern every single day that I show up at work. When I was in my salary job, there were a couple of ways that I saw this showing up. I had some people I was engaging with at this job who in my estimation were often negative, often full of excuses, not getting things to me on time, which would cause a bunch of conflict in my own schedule because then I was running around trying to like make up for that. And there was this point that I reached where I went, okay, how can this be my training for what I want to have next in my life? Because I know I'm growing my coaching business. This was, you know, 10 years ago, I started trying to do this with my salary job. So how do I respond differently to the complainers in life? How do I treat them with more love than I can possibly imagine? How do I see complaining as maybe a cry to be heard, not indicative of some negative, awful person that I just need to get away from? How do I just see it as a cry for help? And I mean, hey, (laughs) if I want to be a coach... Maybe this is like life handing me the most perfect opportunity ever to practice my listening skills from a place of not being biased and not jumping into fix and just listening. And when other people threw stuff at me late and then wanted me to just kind of figure it all out on the fly, how's that my opportunity to practice boundaries? Because they are my boundaries after all. And yeah, there were times where it was like somebody was throwing something at me and they had more power in terms of their rank at that salary job. And I couldn't just practice a boundary and say, I'm sorry, this doesn't work for me. No, because then I would have been fired and then I wouldn't have been able to pay, you know, my bills. I get that. I am not, I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing the whole like love and light. It's all good. Just like think high vibe and you'll be fine. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Sometimes. It's a suit up and show up kind of moment. And what I would do in those moments is I would go, how is this an opportunity for me to practice gratitude even when the circumstances suck? So if my boss is asking me to do this thing and they got all the stuff to me late and I told them, I tried to do my boundaries, I tried to say here's when I need it by, it still got to me late. Now I feel like my whole schedule is thrown off. My projects are thrown off. My deadlines are thrown off. I don't like that. They're, of course, acting like, what's the big problem? Gosh, why can't you be accommodating? It's annoying. (sighs) And how can I just separate from that noise? How can I return to presence and that still, small space within me? How can I use this as my training ground to live and be the person that I want to be? How can I use it as an opportunity to drop resentment as fast as possible? Maybe I can make it a game. How fast can I drop this resentment? And let me tell you something for all the people out there who would just be like, oh my God, that's so Pollyanna. And I used to be one of those people, so (laughs) I totally get it. And that's part of why I think these things still. It's not just Pollyanna 
What it is, is very real mental health. It is fortifying yourself. It is resilience. Because if I had spent any more time in the space of this sucks and I don't like it, what I know about myself and my biochemical history and the emotional toolkit that I had for navigating life at that time, especially in my early 20s, I would have gone down a rabbit hole of depression. And that's just a fact. And I don't want that for my life and I don't want it for you. So if someone wants to say it's all Pollyanna-ish and they're happy with how their life is working, they get to do that. And my guess would be that the voice of fear that's really worried that if it doesn't keep piping up and telling you things suck to try to get you to change jobs so you'll find something that doesn't suck, there's a part of that voice of fear that keeps talking to try to get you to take a different action. And so this is what's before you. You're, you're either going to take that different action and find a different job or you're not for whatever reason. And you might have some excellent reasons for staying right where you are even if the job sucks. And you can't neglect those reasons either. So if you are making the choice to stay, if you know that you have only a couple of years left until you can get your retirement, if you know that the job that you really want is going to be available in six months and for right now this is where you got to be, whatever your circumstances are, train like a warrior with what's showing up right here and right now. That is... That is your mission. I want to leave you with a couple of resources to explore career further. Uh, Dara Paoletti, she's over at um, workuprising.com. Laura Sims, who's over at withlaurasims.com. Sims is S-I-M-M-S. Michelle Ward, who is at whenigrowupcoach.com. All of these people are people I would recommend to explore career and the triggers and what it is that you really want and where to move to, to figure out what you really want and all the complications that I know can go with some of this stuff. And I also want to say too, that part of this work is about you really stepping into who you are. This, like I said, warrior training. And if that aspect interests you, check out the Sovereign Experience, which is my group coaching intensive. You can learn more about it at yourcourageouslife.com and just scroll down until you see the Sovereign Intensive. And you can learn all about what that program entails. Other than that, it's always such a pleasure to hang out with you and do these podcast episodes. Feel free to write in any time, by the way, if you have other things you want me to talk about. Courage when it comes to this or that area of life, questions that you'd love for me to address on a podcast. You can also join the private Courage Habit group that's on Facebook. Search for Courage Habit and you'll find us. And uh, that's another way that we can interact together. And last but not least... I'm Kate Courageous on Instagram. Instagram's kind of my new obsession. So that's where I hang out most often. And I'll see you there. All right. Bye-bye.